Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I have chosen a model for the Great Model Crossover Challenge. And if you guys are not familiar with what that is, is I was challenged on by another YouTuber, uh, Lucas C. He has model car hobby headquarters. He's a friend of mine, and he is primarily a car modeler. And although I do all kinds of stuff from cars, tanks, everything like that, I'm primarily known as an armor modeler. So we got into a little thing, and he challenged me to build a car kit up. But the car kit that I'm going to build up is going to be completely turned into like an AFE vehicle. So it's going to be camouflaged, chipped, weathered, you know, beat up as you would. And we'll also do some kind of guns and stuff on it as well. Whereas Luca is going to take a tank model and he's going to put a bright, uh, I'm not actually quite sure what he's going to do it, but he's going to do a car type paint job. It could be a NASCAR with decals on it, it could be the decals out of this, it could just be a real fancy paint job with flames on it. So it's a kind of a challenge, we're just going to have some fun with modeling, because that's the whole point of modeling is to enjoy this hobby and have some fun with it. So, like I was saying earlier, I have chosen the uh, Tamiya Ford Focus World Rally Cup car from 2001. And the reason I chose this kit was I was looking around for a car that, I, that would not be overly complicated to put together, but would still have some nice detail to it, and one that, well, let's face it, Tamiya's go together great. So, I thought that's the perfect one. So, I was looking inside, and as I was doing that, these are some extra parts from this because I also saw that I had a Gundam kit on there with a really cool machine gun on it that I want to mount on it. So, just to give you a quick little breakdown of what we're talking about, we're going to take the, uh, the rally car and we've got this cool Gatlin gun that I'm going to try to mount inside the vehicle. Kind of like that. It'll be mounted on a pedestal and stuff. So, it'll be a military vehicle. We'll do it in, like in some desert camouflage. As of this moment, that's what I'm planning. Desert camouflage, this cool uh, gun in the middle of it, and then we're going to beat the heck out of it. Weathering it, chipping it, scratching it all up, making it look like it was, you know, put through the ringer, so to speak. Best part of all about this is this kit is totally fictitional, so we can do whatever we want to it, and it's not wrong. So we're just we're just going around having some fun with it. Now, speaking of having some fun, if you guys are familiar with uh, Mediocre Modelers Club on Facebook, it is a uh, a club thing that that I started on Facebook a while back, where you guys can go on and show me all of your model kits. And because I'm doing something different and usual and just having some fun with it, I want you guys to join in with me as well. And if you if you haven't joined Mediocre Model Club, go on there. It's free, obviously. It's regular Facebook stuff. You can get on there and start posting what you're doing. And hopefully you can pick a car and make it military-wise or build a tank and make it look like a car. Whatever you want to do. Even an airplane. A few people have already mentioned to me they wanted to do an airplane with like, you know, flames on it or some other kind of, you know, car sponsorship. Whatever makes you happy. That's part of this challenge right here. And we're just going to go out and have a great time with it. So, uh, I'm really excited about this kit. It's something different. I've been wanting to do something different for a while as opposed to just, you know, the regular building. Still going to be doing those as well, but this thing should go together real quick. There's three sprues in the entire kit and don't really have to worry about decals or anything, so we can just put our regular military paint job on it. So, let's get started on it. Oh yeah, before I forget too, that if you if you like the videos here that we do and you want to be notified when new stuff comes out, please uh, go ahead and subscribe. It's the button right down in the corner down here. It's free to do, and I would really appreciate it if you would. Okay, to start off, we're just going to assemble the chassis, things like that. Pretty, pretty basic and straightforward. I'm not going to put too much uh, time into painting all of this because this is all going to get painted over anyway. But just kind of want to give you a quick rundown how the uh, all the parts go together here. And we'll paint all of this stuff up after we get it aligned. Now the, the fun detailing part's all going to come 
when we actually get to the point where we're working on the, the inside frame because we're gonna have to do some modifying and then do some other kind of stuff inside of it for you know beefing up the uh, the armor and other kind of protection on that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue all these suspension parts on underneath. This is gonna be right out of the kit the way that goes together and then we'll flip it over and start working on the other side. So we have the, the whole lower chassis assembled right now and I've just temporarily popped the, the wheels into place to see how everything fits and as just as you would expect, every, all four wheels hit the ground and are perfectly level. Now I am going to paint the entire chassis like probably like a flat black or semi-gloss black uh, to neutralize all this white color but just kind of quickly show you how some of the parts will fit inside here and remember we're only going to put a passenger seat or excuse me a driver's seat in and then they've got some floorboard plates that will fit inside here which we'll glue those in first and it'll actually kind of look like some of the armor plate that might be on the bottom of a of a vehicle like this now i was uh kind of messing around with the gun system and i'm actually kind of thinking about maybe now putting it up on top and maybe something like you know we mount it up here and we could take the other seat and maybe possibly work on some kind of turret or something but to mount it up like this we'll build some you know individual pieces of plastic to build more of a framework around it and then maybe attach these right up right next to it or something but i'm kind of liking it up a little bit higher and maybe what we'll do is we'll probably have to mount some kind of support system because clearly the roof would not support that by itself but we'll drill out a hole on the roof put this big support that comes through and the gun will basically ride on top of that wrapped around the uh the 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 top of the vehicle there so but we have a little bit more we have to work on before we get to that so we have all of the uh, the roll cage now with the roll cage in there, I'm going to go ahead and build the whole thing right now as it is and see how everything is going to fit around it. If we're going to put that center support in, uh, I still think it'll fit between any of these pieces. And if we have to go back and modify it later, we can do that. But So I'm going to glue all these pieces in and get the roll cage assembled right now, and then we'll come back and show you what it looks like when we attach it. Now we've let the uh, roll cage set up a bit there. Now it's just a matter of going ahead and gluing this into place. And I have to admit, I'm pretty happy that we chose this particular vehicle because of this roll cage. I think it's going to work out really good because it gives the uh, the illusion that it's you know more of a military type vehicle that we're trying to put together and as you can see I'm just dry fitting this last piece in while the uh, frame sets up but god it just almost just like clicks together we'll put it we'll do a little sanding on it get it cleaned up and we have a, a really cool little uh, little piece there and now we can work the uh, center supports down through this and if we have to we can cut part of this bracing out and then reattach it to the center port support has just been welded in so we'll figure that out as we go along now so I'm gonna finish well gluing all this up and we'll see what the uh, the next step is entailed for us Okay, let's show you what we've uh, come up with so far. First of all, I, I've snapped the body into place here and I was doing just some dry fitting and I noticed that there's gonna be a gap right here which would normally be covered up by the uh, part of the windshield. But uh, what we've done is we've taken the, uh, this is a part of the plastic that we're gonna get glued onto the body, but we took the, uh, the sprue part, the runner, and kind of bent it up a little bit to kind of make some more and it's probably not gonna sit in there now because I want it to, but we're gonna build some more framework for the car to kind of cover that up and we'll put some kind of shroud underneath it as well. But we're gonna do that in a few minutes. What I wanna show you now is what I've kind of think I've come up with for the gun mount. So we've cut a little portion of this out here and I've, I've taken this uh, big tube, square tubing, and it'll mount 
right inside just like that and then we can actually mount the gun directly to this. I've kind of bored out a little hole somewhere in here. It should slide on. And we've got our, our seat back here that will mount onto it as well. But what I really wanted to show you was this thing. I found this cool piece. This is a, uh, a Willy's Jeep armor kit. But I think it's going to work perfectly to bend around to be the shielding for the uh, the gunner up on top of the vehicle. And what we'll probably do is we're going to run some more tubing or something like that. That's going to actually hold the seat in the place. And we'll work on all that kind of stuff. But kind of give you an idea. So now that we know, and this this square tubing fits perfectly down into the where the seat would normally go in the channel. It almost locks into place, and we'll be able to glue that up. That'll be a good stiffener. Then we'll have to bore out a hole through the top here, and then we can start putting all of these little pieces together right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that now. Kind of give you a little close-up of what I've been working on for the, for the gun mount. So we've taken our uh, square tubing, we've cut some angle pieces up here, and what that is going to act as is now I've cut this piece out. This is going to be able to mount right here. So we'll be able to wrap the, uh, the metal around, protect the, uh, the gunner. Then this piece will slide right down in through here, and these little pieces will act as like brackets, holding more support for the gun holding that into place, and then we'll be able to mount the the seat that's on it right somewhere back here. We'll have to figure out how big it is, and to me it gives you a figure, so we'll be able to kind of figure out roughly how big a human being will be in that scale, and he's even got the, uh, the little seat belts already put on him there, so we might use him on there as well. So you can kind of imagine this getting mounted in here, and I'm going to start gluing it up. I wanted to first show you guys you know what the process was going to be and I think it's going to work out pretty good now before we do any more of this is we're going to have to make the uh, whoops sorry about that start making the cut that is going to go through the the uh, the roof here so we're going to have to do a lot of measuring to make sure we do that properly okay I've kind of rough together the uh, the assembly that we're going to do for the uh, the gun now you can see that I've put the shield slightly off center and that is because at this particular moment I'm thinking about putting this like it's basically be like a grenade launcher right next to it into this little portion right here I have put a little mount on it I'm gonna see how it looks once we get this in here we've got to do a little bit more cleaning up and things like that but we're just kind of doing the rough end and you can kind of see how with that and this would get mounted right next to it there kind of kind of give it a little bit of balance for the car kind of liking it the more and more I see on it well now that we've got that kind of rough together we can start working on a little bit more on the chassis uh, what we'll go ahead do is put on the rest of the parts that go inside of here and then we're gonna go ahead and paint the entire thing flat black including the under chassis and that'll be a good base for us for our uh, military color Okay, we've jumped a little bit ahead here, and I'll kind of uh, show you guys what we've done. I've sprayed the entire model, or the lower part of the hull, or cha I keep saying hull, it's almost like a tank. Uh, I've sprayed the lower part, the chassis, whatever you want to call it here, all semi-gloss black. We also just temporarily popped the rubber tires on to, to see how it is. We've also attached the, uh, that little front piece of roll bar I was telling you about that'll cover up that little section. We can move that aside now and now we have the body now the body I've done and cleaned up a little bit we put the uh, the rear glass plates in but we painted over though to kind of represent that it's just like it's part of the body work it's armor plate however we decide on that and then what I can do now is kind of oh and I've also put these uh, the insides of the uh, the doors on it all bolts to the actual framework so then we can go ahead and Drop this into place. That locks like that down there. And we'll probably still do a little bit more work on some more things up here. And also have gone ahead and primed the, uh, the gun mount. And there it goes. It locks into place just like we want it. And we have the beginnings, or quite a good start I should say, on the, uh, the frame of this vehicle. So we can start doing some real detail work now, maybe put some piping or some tubing, just all kinds of weird stuff like, you know, powering the gun maybe. Not sure how much we're gonna do on that. 
but uh, it, I'm really liking the way it's coming along. I almost forgot this piece right here too. And I'm kind of going back and forth about putting this, uh, we'll prime it of course too, and then paint the regular body color, but kind of wanting to put that grenade launcher right next to it. I think it kind of balances it out. Originally, I was gonna mount it to the side and which I still could. I could just drill a hole in the side of that uh, that glass plate and mount it in there, but thinking it might go better up on top just because it, it kind of balances out the weight ratio. Now, obviously, if this was a real vehicle and they tried, you know, even turning or anything, <laughs> I would not want to be the guy sitting up in the gun tower up here. But this is this is sci-fi, fictional, just having fun type stuff. So I'm really liking the way it's coming out. So let's start working on the we will put at least front headlights on there and then probably gonna play around with a little bit see if we can put some kind of like uh, brush guard on it as well too to protect the front end okay let me show you what I've done to it so far uh, as you can see we've gone ahead and added like the side mirrors the uh, the spoiler on the back here and then I've also gone ahead and taken some thin styrene tubing or actually just solid stock and made some tubing that would go from like this little canister or these other little boxes that I've put on top of it there just uh just to give it a little bit of a little bit a little something extra to it now we've also gone ahead and added a little bit of filler to the front right here in back of the roll bar because I could still see quite a bit into it if you looked at certain angles and since there's no engine in this kit we didn't want that showing at all we've also gone ahead and put all of the uh, the mesh on all of these vents and as well as the front grill here and i do have all of the or the both of the headlights painted silver those will get popped inside there after we've done all the painting on the actual vehicle and then we can put the clear glass over it and so we have all that okay one last thing that i've built up and that is this piece of armored windshield, we'll call it. And we put a little bracing on it as well as some mesh inside there. And we'll be able to display this one of two ways. We'll have it, we can leave it open with like a little, little, little stand that holds it up. Or that if it's in like, uh, you know, kamikaze mode and they're going in for a big attack, we can have this down. And I left this little cutout right here. And this would be an area where a guy can reach over from the side and lift the entire thing. So... Now, it's uh, at a point now, we can still add stuff to the side of the vehicle or any other things. I really like the tubing and things like that. It's totally fictional, but it looks, it looks cool on the vehicle. Now, the entire vehicle has been sprayed with Tamiya's uh, gray primer. So that's how we have a nice even coat over everything. But what we'll probably do now is uh, we'll probably go right ahead and start doing the painting. And if we decide we want to add more little, uh, little accessories all over it, we always still can. Now the first thing, of course, hey, it's a uh, Andy's Hobby Headquarters video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to spray it with XF69 NATO Black. Sorry about the paint ran over just that, but this is NATO Black. And you know it wouldn't be a, uh, a video build without a little NATO Black in it. So we're going to disassemble all this now because all of this is still... Well, let me get rid of that. All this comes apart and the body comes off, all those other things. And we're going to take it all apart, take it over to the painting table and start painting it up. to start to do the highlight coat with just using flat white now there was quite a bit of overspray from this particular paint it probably needed to be thinned a little bit more uh, to me a white sometimes has that problem but because we're going to be covering it over with this uh, dark yellow desert yellow color excuse me that it really didn't matter if we had the overspray anyway because it's all going to get covered up now because we did the white coat, we don't want to go super heavy with this particular coat so we can still see some of the black shadow start to pop through. 
Okay, you can see we've gone ahead and clear coated the uh, the body of the vehicle here. That's why it's got a little bit of a shine to it, and that is because we are going to put some decals on it as well. And I just temporarily put the uh, the gun in place without the uh, the body on top of it, and it's really cool. That might be something down the road if we had an engine already built into this to build a. Uh, Another little vehicle like this, just with the roll cage and the gun mounted on top. It's kind of an unusual looking uh, piece. So we're gonna let that dry now for a couple hours, let the, uh, the clear coat set up real well. And I've got this sheet of decals that I really like this little emblem with the little eagle and the thing and some of the numbers. We'll put all kinds of numbers and decals all over the side of the vehicle. And after we do that, we'll clear coat it one more time. And then we can start assembling the vehicle and chipping and dirtying and weathering it all up. And now that the clear coat is dried, we're going to put a little bit of Mark Fit Strong down. I think that's kind of a cool little emblem to put on the side there. We've also started putting uh, num serial numbers on the side of the vehicle. We'll put a few other numbers on there too. And then we'll just finish this up by putting in one more little coat Mark Fit on top of that. And that gives us the ability to align it just right the way we want. I think that's going to look good like that. We'll let that dry and then after we put all the decals on we're going to go ahead and clear coat the entire vehicle. So we've got all of the, uh, the vehicle assembled, all the decals on and what I'm doing now is I'm taking our chipping color which I'll show you what the, uh, the mix is down there and with a sponge applicator we're going around and just starting to chip up the vehicle a little bit to give it a little wear and tear as if it's being used and you can see we've started working around the shield already around the edges getting those all nice and worn now we've also put in the bulletproof glass and I'm doing air quotes for that so we don't have to worry about shielding those because those are bulletproof glass on those front uh, lights and we're just going around and putting a few little little scratches and tiny things like that all around all the areas you'd expect we want this vehicle to look like it's been used a little bit in this not quite sure what this is supposed to represent it's not like a Mad Max type thing because the vehicles in too good a condition but kind of like maybe like a futuristic military where you know not not using tanks things like that so it's science fiction though so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the whole vehicle and we're gonna taking our sponge and our chipping color we're gonna chip up the rest of this vehicle and we'll come back and show you what it looks like okay now that we've done the chipping we're gonna lay down a little thin coat of streaking grime so right now we're putting on some enamel thinner and that's just to make the uh, the paint flow a little bit easier and we're starting off little little streaking dark streaking grime do a couple little spots here and there and then taking our big wide brush again just kind of pull it down and this one we want it to follow you know the contours of the vehicle so start working it and we want it to be subtle we aren't going to have it you know just completely full of stuff and it leaves just some slight little marks so we're going to go over most of the vehicle in anywhere that we've got uh, scratches and chips we'll also use a little bit of our light rust wash on it as well to highlight some of those things so i'm going to go ahead and do that right now Okay, 
we finished up the weathering of the streaking grime and etc. on it. Did a little bit of black panel wash with Tamiya's black panel liner. And what I did is I covered up the headlights, the bulletproof headlights, took them outside, put a little masking tape on it, and then we shot the entire thing with TS-80 dull coat one more time. And that just neutralizes any streaks that we have, it kind of blends everything together. Now the final step I'm going to do is we're going to take our XF-57 buff, and in the airbrush from probably about 18 inches away, we're just going to lightly mist over the entire vehicle tires everything and it's going to leave like a little coat of dust over everything because it's kind of a desert vehicle and it really will tie everything together and blend it so we're going to do that right now Well, here we go, guys. Here's our completed model, and I think we we did a good enough job to uh, crush Lucasy and whatever uh, monstrosity he comes up with. Uh, no, all kidding aside, no, I had a lot, a lot of fun building this kit. It was something totally different, totally new. You know, building a car and then just scratch building all kinds of stuff to put on it, and just having a good time with it. And you know what modeling is really all about. So I would definitely recommend, if you guys want to have some fun, just to start cutting up some car kits. Yeah, don't cut up an armor kit, but uh, car kits you can cut up all you want and start putting guns all over them and doing all that kind of cool stuff. So, so I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many, many more videos coming. Okay, I almost forgot we need to come up with a name for this vehicle, the one that's going to destroy the uh, Lucas C's vehicle. So I was thinking like maybe Street Sweeper or, or Devastator or Annihilator, just something cool. So why don't you guys put down in the comments down below what you think we should call it.